Welcome back to the quest where we like to bring you back for the biggest games in this journeyman adventure and things are no different today as it's a top of the table clash. So this is probably a huge mistake. I could have brought you back for a nice comfortable fixture against a team lower down in the league and could have fooled you into thinking that life is going swimmingly in Latvia. It kind of is. We're doing very well. We're winning lots of games. But it's another tough league. You really can't afford to lose too many games and still be in contention at the top of the table. Fortunately, the board requirement is only that we qualify for Europe and we are well on course to do that. In fact, since our last episode, we've only actually played four matches in the league. Ten of the games I've played offline have all been in various cup competitions. So let's show you how we've been doing. We made progress in the Latvian Cup by beating Tuckums 2000, but we needed extra time to do it. And we've actually progressed around further now. We made it through a quarterfinal tie, 4-2 during extra time, to set up a nice little semi-final tie that if we could win, we could be coming back in our final episode of this season for a nice cup final fixture, which would be a long tradition during this journeyman because we made a cup final in Northern Ireland. We won the Welsh Cup last season. We could be making the Latvian Cup final as well. In the league, things have gone okay in three of the games and we not even conceded a goal. But in one, things went slightly awry. We won 2-0 and 3-0 against Grobenas and Supernova. And we also picked up a 1-0 win against Tukums again. But it was this game against Alda that we huffed and we puffed. And I was guilty of not respecting the point. I saw that RFS were 2-0 down in their fixture and we were tying 0-0 in ours. So I decided to really go for it. I pushed players forward. I went more attacking. I took the shackles off and we conceded a goal late on and lost 1-0. And RFS battled back to tie 2-2 in their game. And that's why they are currently top of the table. But it's in European competition where we've actually played most of our fixtures. We made progress against the Maltese team that we played during our last episode. We won the return leg 3-0, 11-3 on aggregate, setting up a tie against Spartak Trnava of Slovakia. We went out to Slovakia and won the first leg 3-1. I thought a heck of a performance and we beat them 1-0 at home to send us into the next round against Cypriot opposition from Limassol. This was a tough game. They knocked a decent side out in the previous round. We drew 0-0 at home and I thought we were really going to struggle out in Cyprus. But we managed to beat them 2-0 away from home to send us in to the final qualifying round before we would be in the group stages proper. Unfortunately, fate conspired to hand us a tie against Bromby. And Bromby, by the way, were semi-finalists in the Conference League last season, making it all the way to a tie against Atalanta, which they won 3-0 in the first leg, only to lose 5-0 out in Italy. So they had very good European pedigree compared to the likes of us. But we almost did the unthinkable. We drew the first leg 1-1. We were very fortunate. They were by far the dominant side. It was a long-range effort from the newly signed Harry Brook that managed to get us a tie in the home leg. I had absolutely no hopes of going out to Denmark and securing a victory, but we very nearly did. Again, it was like the Alamo. We had very little of the ball. We had very few shots, but with one of them, we managed to break away and take the lead. Our right winger, Contreras, and you'll see, I tweaked the shape of the team by this stage, fired us into the lead, only for them to score from a corner in the 94th minute and absolutely break our hearts whenever the opposition get a set piece deep into injury time and you're the underdogs you have this sense of foreboding about what is going to happen next and speaking of senses of foreboding we were a very tired very worn outside when they rewarded a direct free kick during extra time and you already knew before they even took that kick 
where it was going to end up. So we bowed out of Europe just short of qualifying for the group stages. Our rivals at the top of the table, though, had better luck. They got knocked out of the Champions League qualifiers by Red Star Belgrade. They then got knocked out of the Europa League qualifiers by our old foes, Total Non-Stop Solutions. And they then dropped into the Conference League where they were handed a tie against Dinamo Batuma from Georgia. They won the first leg. They lost the second leg. They progressed on aggregate. They seem to have got a few more lives in European qualification than we were able to have. And against a Georgian side, they seem to have been given a bit of a softer route to the league stage than we got by facing Brondby. But at least it's going to keep them busy and hopefully keep their players tired as fitness in Latvia seems to be a big part in determining how successful you're going to be. So understandably, both ourselves and our FS are absolutely pooped. We've been playing Sunday, Thursday, Sunday, Thursday for a couple of months now, and we've missed so many league games because of our involvement in European competition that we've amassed quite a healthy number of games in hand against some of the teams that are chasing us. We've played six games fewer than Meta, four games fewer than Valmiera. We've got a lot of catching up to do, which means our schedule for the remainder of the season switches to Saturday, Wednesday, Saturday, Wednesday, and the players are starting to feel the fatigue of such a gruelling schedule, particularly because Latvia has a rule that I was not aware of when I took the job of always having to have three homegrown players on the pitch at any one time. That doesn't mean three Latvians. We have the national team's backup goalkeeper in Rihard Matrovic, but unfortunately, he was not trained at a Latvian club. He came through at West Ham before moving on to Barnet and Hendon, before then moving back to Latvia. Even our backup keeper started his career in Denmark before spending time in Italy and then coming back to Latvia. Neither of these players count as one of our homegrown players. To be one of those, you have to have been trained at a club in Latvia for three years before your 21st birthday. So if I want to take any of these homegrown players off, I have to replace them with one that I'm bringing on off the bench to preserve the three homegrown players on the pitch at any one time. And navigating that little league rule has proven quite the challenge so far. Fyodorovs and Chernomordis are both way too fatigued to be starting tonight's top of the table clash, but I have no option but to play them unless I want to bring in kids, which would significantly weaken the team. So I rely on these youngsters being on the bench, and I have to give them game time if I want to bring any of our homegrown first-team players off. And I guess that's the whole point of the rule, to develop the youngsters that are trained in Latvia. The one player who's become absolutely integral to our plans is one that I casually thought I will try and give a smattering of game time to during the end of this season. But it actually turns out he's crucial to our plans. Nil Tarasovs is just 18 years old. As a central defender, he has gaps in his game, such as being a little bit vulnerable in the air. But it turns out that I'm having to play him on a weekly basis just to preserve the three homegrown players. And I've moved him being an inverted fullback over on the left and I've dispensed with the back three primarily because our right wing back Amund Mollehagen picked up a really bad injury and was out for seven weeks and we really struggled to provide the quality of wing back needed to play a back three or a back five and we started to look a little bit toothless and we're really struggling to score goals so instead, I've switched to a back four. It might just be temporary. We're going to try to take this 4-3-3 system forward for the remainder of this season. But our biggest job going in to season two of our time with Riga FC is going to be the recruitment of players that were trained in Latvia for three years before their 21st birthday. And they, my friends, are like unicorns. What we do have, however, is increasingly swelling finances. That little European jaunt where we almost made it to the group phase 
meant that we've now got the best part of £17 million in the bank. That seems like an awful lot of money for a club who are only averaging attendance of about a 1,000 or so. We've got £8 million in the transfer budget, a guarantee of £4.73 million next season. If I can spend even a million of that, I think I will have done very well. I think most of our signings will be on free transfers, but the finances are looking like they're going to give us a real chance of building a squad for next season that might be able to compete on two fronts. We're really going to have to work hard to get 15 high-quality foreigners backed up by 10 players trained in Latvia that are of good quality as well, because this is a very competitive league. There may only be 10 sides in it, but RFS are the TNS of Latvia, but a diet TNS, a TNS zero, if you will. I think they are catchable. They do lose games, and hopefully they're going to lose a fourth of the season tonight as we get out there and take them on. So if we suffer defeat in this evening's game, we are going to be six points behind our rivals, although we will still have a game in hand. Were we to win it, we would be tied on points with a game in hand. I'm seeing the end of this season as a little bit like a free hit because it's not really our squad and we've got a good budget to try and rebuild during the pre-season, which will take place during the winter of this campaign. But it would be a shame if we didn't emerge from this debut season in Latvia with at least some piece of silverware. Ideally, that would be a league title or a cup as well. But it really is the composition of the squad that we are finding making things difficult for us. Not being able to rest players when they need it because they are homegrown is a challenge, and not being able to rest players when they need it because we just don't have quality backups to bring in is also a problem. We've raced through the first 28, 30 minutes of this game and created absolutely nothing. We've got very tired players, again, who seem to have picked up further knocks. Our opponents have not managed to elicit a highlight either yet. But you can see how tired some of our players are already in a first half where both teams seem to have played at a testimonial pace. We're going to have to try and improve things for the second period. And I think we might need to turn to the bench to try and do it. So welcome to the halftime entertainment in Latvia, which we call Homegrown Rubik's Cube, where we try and shuffle the pack and still have three homegrown players out on the pitch. Fyodorovs is one of those players. He's very tired and playing a 6.3. So we'd like to take him off at Akampong, except, well, of course, we then don't have our three homegrown players out on the pitch. The other player I'd like to substitute is Ibaricho, very, very tired and playing a 6.4. That's easier to do, except we don't have a lot of replacements on the bench. So we're going to try and shuffle the pack like this. We're going to bring on Edis Radikic, who is quick and can finish. But the off the ball and the composure, and certainly the teamwork element of his game, is not quite so strong. But he is at least homegrown. If we bring him on, I don't think he can be the deep-lying forward that Ibaricho was playing. And I don't think he can be the pressing forward that Diani normally is, especially with that teamwork of just four. So instead, we're going to ask the young 18-year-old to be an advanced forward, and that will mean that we can now bring Akampong on at right back and still have three homegrown players in our 11 that are taking to the field. And we're going to need a lot more from them during the second half. if We're going to win this game. We gave the players a little bit of a dressing down at halftime. I'm not sure whether that was the right team tour, but we were very limp in that first half. But we've had an early free kick in the second. Harry Brook, who's joined us from Haverford West, probably on a £1,000 a week more than I think he deserves, had a little free kick and he's now taken the corner. The ball's come back to him. He sends it deep into the box. But we can't elicit a chance from that. And now they've got a throw in. Over on their right side, our left flank. We're facing them up pretty well. And we've made a good job so far of just stunting their progress. But now they've gone with a quick ball over the top. And we're looking for a linesman's flag that I'm afraid isn't forthcoming. How did they manage to dink that over and get through? 
They were offside there. They run back into an onside position. And then a player from midfield is completely unattended. He has the freedom of the pitch to try and break through on our goal. And he fires it past our Latvian keeper. And that means that we've got a lot of work on to try and save this game. A draw would do. It would certainly keep things alive. But we're going to need an attacking highlight and a goal in order to get it. So we've made another substitution. We've tried to freshen it up once more. We've tweaked the shape as well. But we are not making a lot of progress in this game. We're going to have to throw it up to attack. And we're going to encourage the players as well. Our opponents really have had the only chances of note during this game. And we are not producing very much. With 20 minutes to go, we've got our first decent highlight. As Kirkgaard now over on the right slings a ball into the box. It's headed away with ease. Tarasov plays it back to his central defensive teammates. And we work the ball into midfield. Here is Harry Brook. Himself, very fatigued and booked, but a player with a little bit of quality who might be able to craft a chance now. We've got players in the box, including the youngster who we've brought on and he scored in the derby. 18 years old, he ignores the fans. He runs to his teammates, classy. And Brooke is the player that just pulled the strings in midfield, gave the ball to Kirkguard, who played a low cross along the... Not even the six-yard box. It's more along the goal line, and it is a tap-in for the youngster. And we are now back in this tie. We're going to respect the point a little and go back down to positive. You never know. We might be able to find a winner. 16 minutes to go. Our last two substitutions have been made. We've brought on another youngster in midfield, and we're coming forward once more. It's a long, looping ball into the box that they've managed to smuggle away, and now they are on the counter. Stepanak, who's come on for our young inverted fullback, has managed to win a tackle, given the ball to his defenders, and we're going to build up from the back. Here is Dumbledore, one of the youngsters that we've just brought on in midfield. He feeds Egan, who gives the ball away, and once more, we've set up the counter-attack for RFS. They sling the cross in. It's a little header that Matrovic plucks then drops because i think they had a player offside and we go again we build through brook in midfield once more on to another of the substitutes stuglis gives the ball to Kirkguard. he's too tired to even run now he just gives up on the ball and we've got defensive work to do again they've got players free on the left flank and they've got plenty in the box to try and hit with a cross instead they seem as tired as we are Kirkgaard just thumps the ball forward. It's a little bit of a mix-up that our 18-year-old manages to pounce on. Can Kirkgaard finally deliver a bit of quality? He can. And Egan comes in at the far post. He started the game in central midfield. He's now over on the left flank. And he's put us 2-1 up. And our opponents seem just as tired as we do. So much lazy play from both sides. But the ball falls to Egan, who fires it into the net. And from 1-0 down, we're 2-1 up. And we're thinking about how we can see out this game. On 89 minutes, we've thrown a little bit of time wasting on to try and see out this match. If we could win it, it could be a huge step towards just keeping us in this title battle. Look how tired some of those players are. Harry Brook in particular. The six minutes of stoppage time. We've played it all now. We've come from a goal down and got a 2-1 win. And it was interesting that one of our youngsters was able to work us back into the game. But there we are, level on points with RFS at the summit of the table and still with that game in hand. And we've got to go off and play a whole lot of games off camera. I think... We're going to not come back until the, the business end of the season where we might still be in a title battle. Who knows? We might even have a cup final to bring you back for as well. Hopefully, whatever we arrive back for in our next episode, it's going to involve the chance to lift trophies.